Continuing on with chapter two, we're going to head into 2.3, dun, 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 which is a lot of line graphs, <laughs> glorified line graphs. Um, there are going to be three different main types of them, and we're going to be um, able to tell the difference between them. So before we can even start making the first line graph, we first need to learn how to find class midpoints. A class midpoint is the sum of consecutive lower class limits divided by two. Now, did you catch that? It's not 35 plus 44.9, add those up and divide by two. Because remember, this is really 44.9999999, right, forever. So what you do is you take 35 and 45, the same numbers you would have taken in order to find the class width. And you add the two of them up and you divide by two. All right, now I'm going to do this in Excel a little bit. Let me go over here. Now remember, this is the same um, data set we've actually used before. It's the stats exam grades. We had found um, the frequencies and the relative frequencies in here. So I'm going to add in a column for the class width, or excuse me, the class midpoint, because why not, right? And see, there are the frequencies and relative frequencies we'd already found. So um, I could do it a couple places, but I'm going to do it right here in between these two columns. So I click on the letter B, see how it turns into that downward arrow? I click there, right click, insert, I'm going to call it class midpoints, enter. Okay, or you can just call them midpoints, that's fine. All right, so equals, now I want to add up 35 and 45, so 35 plus 45, close parentheses, divided by 2. There we go. The next one, parentheses, 45 plus 55, close parentheses, divided by 2. Now, notice how far apart are 40 and 50? 10, right? Isn't that the same distance between 35 and 45? And 44.9 and 54.9? Right. So all I really want to do is add 10 on every time. So you can do equals that cell you just found, B3 plus 10. Enter. Let me click back up on the 60, and I'm going to go to the handle and fill the column. And there they are. You could, have, you could do every one of them with parentheses if you want, or you can do the add 10 thing either way. And there are your midpoints. I'm going to copy those and paste them back here. Cool. Done with that. All right. In section 2.2, the class width was defined as the difference between consecutive lower class limits. See, like 35 or 45. Matter of fact, consecutive lower class limits, that's yellow. Or you could have done it with consecutive upper class limits. Look at, um, let me grab a different color. How about aqua? See, if you take 54.9 and 44.9, those two numbers, you take the difference, that'll work, right? But there's another way to do this from um, to calculate the width from the table. And it's what we just used in order to, to create these numbers in the first place. Namely, you can find the difference between consecutive, meaning one right after the other, class midpoints. Okay, so let me show you that. Let's make it green. And I'm, I'm using the first two classes, but of course it would be true for any of them. I could take 80 to 90, that would work. 85 minus 75, that would work, and so on. All right, that question is answered. Oh, I better give myself an example. Example 50 take away 40 equals 10. Done. Now, a frequency polygon is a line graph, right? It's a graph that uses points connected by the line segments, i.e. a line graph, to represent the frequencies of the classes. It is a, constructed by plotting a point above each class midpoint. See that? On a horizontal axis at a height equal to the frequency. That's a frequency polygon. A relative frequency polygon does the same thing, but with relative frequencies, like right here. Now, how do you make these in Excel? Good question. Well, first thing you're going to do is you're going to have to have Excel with the midpoints and the frequencies. And then I recommend highlight the frequencies and then go to insert and choose a line graph. And I personally like this front one right here, this one on the left. There we go. And now we'll meet up here back um, next time and talk about cleaning this graph up a bit. See you then.